Let's have a closer look at the new Porsche 992 GT3 RS. Porsche created a much more aggressive version compared to the normal GT3 and there are lots of features to talk about. First of all, Porsche mainly concentrated on aerodynamics, on downforce and aero balance, instead of a huge increase in power. The new GT3 RS has 525 horsepower, so 15 more than the GT3. Now let's look at some numbers. Porsche states that the car has 409 kg of downforce at 200 km per hour. For comparison, that is around 100 kg more than the LaFerrari at the same speed. At 285 km per hour, it produces 860 kg of downforce. If we assume an air density of 1.2 kg per cubic meter and a frontal area of 2.2 square meter, we get a lift coefficient of 1, which is quite impressive for a road car. For comparison, this is almost twice as much downforce as the AMG 1. So it's no wonder that the top speed is only at 296 km per hour. I assume that the top speed is reached with DRS. Yes, the car has DRS and we will come to that in a minute. So it looks like the top speed without DRS is the speed where Porsche states the highest downforce, 285 km per hour. So if we take the maximum of 525 horsepower and deduct 10% until the power reaches the wheels, we can calculate the drag coefficient. Without DRS we get 0.53 and an efficiency of 1.9. With DRS we get 0.47. These are quite impressive numbers for a road car and they show us that the DRS effect is roughly 11%. But opening the flap of the two element rear wing reduces lots of downforce at the back and the aero balance changes. For normal customers and a road car that could be hard to handle. And so Porsche is balancing the downforce loss with an active front diffuser, similar to what Mercedes did in F1 with their double DRS. The aero balance stays the same and the car is easier to handle for the driver. Possible is this because they now also introduced a large center radiator. This has a large intake close to the stagnation point and two outlets on top. So the sides are now free for aero devices and there are no side radiators in the way anymore. Because of the large front diffuser lots of air ends up in the front wheel arch. That in return requires a decent front wheel arch extraction. And because so much air goes through the front suspension, the suspension arms are now aero shaped. Porsche also could create an extreme sideline with large outlets because they are now using carbon fiber doors. They allow very extreme shapes that help with aerodynamics. Important is the management of the different air flows around the car. The air intake for the engine is in the center at the very back, so this path has to stay clean. That's why there are two outlets at the front that try to split the flow to the sides. To push this hot, low energy air outboard even more, Porsche added some large gurneys around the outlet. Additionally, they use a large blade inside the outlet and these winglets to push the air outboard. The winglets create outwashing vortices that increase outwash. But one of the big disadvantages of the 911 shape is that large downsloping rear end. This creates lots of low pressure, which is lift because it's on top of the car, and this drags the low energy air towards the center of the engine inlet again. Porsche's solution are fences at the roof to keep the losses outboard and the center flow clean. Typical for Porsche is the small and short diffuser because of the low hanging rear engine. The 911 tries to compensate the downforce loss with a large wing, but wings are less efficient than floors. The race version tilt the whole drivetrain or even turn it to create a mid-engine car. Anyway, the new GT3 RS takes the 911 to another level and introduces lots of lessons learned from the race version. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below.